there's videos like, don't, I mean, less is more, make it simple, don't be overthinking, I mean. How old do you I think he is? In his 20s. <laughs> I'd be surprised if he's over 25, 26, 27, I don't know, I mean, he seems pretty young. But I was thinking like 21. Like I said, I, I freaking been watching him and. He's been, he's right more times than he's wrong. Look at that SRNE squeezing. Squeeze for me, baby. We're live, Henry. We are live, making money. Money Monday. Yup, yup, yup. All right, welcome everybody. It is Monday, May 18th. So... Picking up where we left off on uh, on Friday, we left. We cut the live stream on Friday just before this giant ass move on SRNE. And we uh, said we we even said it about watch something's gonna go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As soon as we cut the live stream, so Henry had bought at four eighty four sixty five four sixty five right here when it got up over View App. Henry bought right in here. Uh, I was watching it. Me and him were still on the phone after we got off the live stream. And then it started squeezing up. And then during this consolidation period, right here in the 550s, I hopped in long. It squeezed up to 6. I sold at 6. And then it consolidated more. I hopped in at 6. And then it squeezed all the way up to 7. So I was selling into this push. I bought again on this dip down to seven, like it's 725, and then sold into this last rip towards eight or eight, nine. Um, and then finally, I bought it one more time. I actually went and worked out. I was working out, and I put an order to buy at 650, I think it was, 655. And while I was working out, I got executed right here on this dip right here. When it dipped down, boom. Um, and I actually added more here, down here at 615. And then it started coming back. I sold half of it into this push, and then I held the rest over the weekend. Hold the rest over the weekend. Sold some this morning at 1025. Is that what I said, Henry? 1025? Yeah, 1027, something like that, yeah. And then Henry sold some, finally. At what? What'd you sell at? 10 what? 1050. 1050. And then now it dipped down. I added here at 9. I added back here at 9. So now my new average is $7.73. And we're squeezing. Yeah, I still got some. Like I said, I, I just have a feeling the stock's going to get to... 15 16 17 dollars this week i don't know but hey remember i did call it remember i said i bet the stock gets to 850 henry did call it 850 i don't know where the hell he where he at nine so i don't know where like how was crystal ball told him that but it worked it worked and uh I think it was just because the biggest thing, like I said, they had sixty million in volume at like nine o'clock. Yeah, that was the crystal ball right there. It has unreal that volume. I mean, my gosh. And you said it several times during the live stream. You're like, gosh, the volume is like crazy. I don't know how it can't go. The volume's crazy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, when you get volume like that, I mean, look at this volume. That's unreal. Half a billion shares. A volume that's crazy so literally I'm sitting on a winner right now I've already locked in I've already locked in 1500 and I'm sitting on another 800 in profits right now hell I should probably sell some right now should I sell some No, I'm not going to sell any right now. We'll, we'll just watch it. 
Uh, I'm also watching CODX. Palkush is long MRNA at $72. Nice. Did, That's too expensive of a stock for what's, me. But what's their news? Some vaccine. Same thing as SRNA. Any, I think they came out with a cure or whatever. Who knows? The question I is... Pay attention. It's too expensive of a stock for me. So. <laughs> the question with uh, CODX, is it going to bounce here? I don't know. They've gotten a lot of negative press lately. I think it might go red again. I don't. I don't know if it's gonna bounce today. Palkesh, did you sell any into that ninety-four dollar squeeze? MRNA. That's what you guys want to talk about. Well, I just Palkesh put in. He's long from seventy-two dollars. Jeez, he caught it early this morning. He caught it right when it started moving. Damn, bro, you were up early. You're ready for that one. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Bertie. Too rich for my blood. Yeah, it's too expensive for me now. Maybe in a few years, <laughs> I'll be trading stocks over 50 bucks. I don't know what to do with CODX. I'm just going to leave it alone, I guess. I want to short it, but it's down so much. Maybe I'll short a bounce. Uh, the other one, Mark... I think Mark's going to bounce. It's sold off the last couple days. It's green on the day now. I thought this on Friday, but maybe I think maybe it was a day early. I think it's going to bounce. Uh, Henry's long from 135. Yep. I haven't taken a position yet on it. So I'm, I'll just watch it. I think it's going to bounce. The red to green on it is 130. So maybe if it dips to 130, I might buy it if it holds. I did sell some this morning at 150, but I still have a few hundred shares left that I'm gonna just to see what it does. I've already made most of my money for the day, so I'm gonna do my best not to trade. Yeah, I'm gonna sit on my hands. I I'm I'm, hit my daily goal and then some. So unless something totally spectacular comes along, look at <sighs> ACB. Damn it! I would have tripled my money. Why didn't I buy that? I love them pot stocks. You know me. I've been telling you about pot stocks for six months. I could have bought it on the 14th. What, what day was that? What was the 14th? Where's my calendar? Oh, wow. ACB gapping up. I seen it, too. So, 14th. I could have bought that Thursday. Oh, Thursday. Oh, my God. But I'm mm. like, oh, it's going to go below 5. I'll get it under 5. And it never did. I'm so mad. Oh. Wow. This is up a lot. They just I recently, did, they recently did a reverse split, too. Yeah, and I love those. I don't know why... I. It did the reverse split. It opened up. It got to like, I think, eight bucks or something, and then it it just went down for a couple of days. So what's the float on it now then? If they did the reverse split, I don't know. My thinker swims since over a hundred million. So let's I mean, see what my says. my trade idea says one point six billion, but I don't think that that's right now that they did a reverse split. Yeah. Because the share count, you know. They're not updated yet because that's what Yahoo yeah the float the float has to be lower now since they did the reverse split but i'm so mad because i didn't get into it when it did the reverse split i think it opened up like eight bucks or something and then i had alerts set definitely start dropping because they usually drop but then they go back up it's, it's pretty typical I don't know why I didn't buy in the low fives. Jorge wants to know about INUV. Mm, wow, gapping up. Nice percent gainer, man. Up to 54 cents. Looks like a breakout on the daily. Huh, that's an interesting one. INUV, do they got news? News. I client CTV demand increase over 300% in midst of COVID-19. What, what does that mean? 
Uh, let's see what Think of Swim says. Market technology powered by artificial intelligence service brands and agency announces 300% increase in clients signing to run connected TV. Oh, okay. So they got an increase in people signing up. Reported last week that the result of the COVID-19 pandemic, advertisers are planning to spend up to 33% less on traditional TV advertising in lieu of online connected TV. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't have cable anymore. I, I have all internet streaming. I have YouTube TV, HBO, Netflix, ESPN Plus. So I can get all UFC fights. The reported. Cited cancellation of the sporting events and shelter in place orders catalyst for the shift. Wow. Wow, that seems like a pretty decent catalyst. Price yeah. action looks good. So that one definitely, thanks for the alert on that one. That one uh, definitely a potential buy. Oh, I got to get my other charts up. Uh oh, Tim Sykes is doing a web on right now. Or maybe not. Maybe he's just, uh, he just entered the room. <laughs> Hope everybody had a good weekend. I had a great weekend. Got some more of them garlic pepper brats. Okay, uh, let's see here. DFFN just did a. I was going to short that one. Actually, I had a little bit short up in the. 160s and it uh, they did an offering just a few minutes ago so that one went down um, Sab is up to uh, 225 and holding uh, INUV I'm gonna throw that up on the charting and see what else we got going on other percent gainers uh, YCBD. Hmm. I'm mad I missed out on that one. I was actually looking at that one yesterday. Going through stocks. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should get in. Close that around oh, just under a dollar. Maybe I'll break through. And I missed out on it. Uh, Jonathan shorted MRNA once in the morning at 93, covered at 89.50. Nice. Four bucks a share. Just being patient today. Don't need to trade again. YCBA. Uh, YCBA. It's starting to come back. I'm getting more interested in it. I was. I'm so mad. I. I freaking. I. I looked at it yesterday. I was as stocks. I was going through. I was looking at that one. N T R P and S E E L. And. I'm like, well, I'll put them on to see what they do. And what is YCBD? They are, they they dish. Oh, okay, CBD. Okay, so they're moving in sympathy with uh, ACB. They produce and distribute various cannabinoid products. It owns or operates consumer hemp-based CBD brand. Why well, it went down now after it spiked up this morning? They missed their earnings this morning, so. Who missed their earnings? Y-C-B-A-E-D. Their sales missed, I'm sorry. Their sales missed. So that's probably why it went down. What the hell? I screwed up my... What the most recent news? Alright, there we go. Wall Street, positive open hopes for economic recovery. I told 
told Matt about it yesterday too, or last night. YCBB message me and we were talking. Good night, Matt. All right, we'll watch that one too. We'll throw that one up on the charting. Who should I get rid of? WTRH. Oh, I got it right there. All right. Got four minutes. Okay, SRA and E is going to be top watch. That's the one everyone's looking at today. Um. Is it going to tank at the open or is it going to squeeze? God, Invax is just a monster, man. Invax is just wrecking everybody. Look at that. I'm just gonna try to take my. I'm gonna try to trade my SRNE the best I possibly can, and then hands off the wheel today. I over trade every fucking day. Every day. I over trade. Thank God I cut my loss on Invax last Monday. Jesus Christ. I'd be so butthurt. Oh. So three minutes till the open. I'm going to grab a glass of water real fast. Yeah. Mama didn't make me any coffee this morning. We're playing poker again tonight, Henry. Are you going to come? Mm -hmm. Maybe. We'll see. What do you mean, maybe? If, if you're not, if, if it's a maybe, then I'm then I'm going to text somebody else. All right, text somebody else. All right. So I got a couple new guys that are wanting to come. Couple guys that are finally getting over being scared of the COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they want they want to play, but they want to play, but they were all scared of the COVID. But now that the state's opening up, so they're like, oh, I think I can come. They're like, you know, my guest has hit me up, and he's like, hey, are you still having those games? And I was like, yeah. So. He's like, well, now that they're opening everything up, I think I'll be, I think I can come now. He, I think it was more of his girlfriend that wouldn't let him come than he didn't want to on his own. Him and this farmer named Mike, who is a ton of action. He's yeah. a lot of action, yeah. Farmer Mike, is, yeah, he throws his money around quite a bit. All right, I got 50 seconds. Plus, Danimal had a buddy that he wanted to bring. We got a, we got a friend. And his name is Danimal. And he's always fucking weird creeping out Ashley, our dealer. We have a dealer named Ashley and she's got really big tits. And she definitely fucking shakes them and flaunts them around. The guys like to throw, when they tip her, after the hands are over with, they like to, they like to throw the tips in her, in her cleavage. All right, 15 seconds. Henry's like, I don't give a fuck about poker right now, man. We got blast off time coming up. I think SRNE is going to squeeze. That's, I mean, how can it not? Right? Didn't you say they're going to find a cure, Henry? What? For the COVID. I don't know. Uh-oh. It's having trouble. I 
think I'm going to take a little bit off. Sell. Sell. There we go. I don't want to sell it all. Damn it. It sold it all. Son of a bitch. I hate E-Trade Pro. I'm... Dude, when I get in a new broker, I'm switching my trading platform to DOTS. E-Trade is so fucking slow at the open. I tried to sell half my position, and then the, it didn't look like the order was going through. So then I pressed it again, and then I ended up selling the whole damn thing. And now it's bouncing. Fuck. <laughs> Such bullshit. CODX is squeezing a little bit. All right, so I'm all out of SRNE, and I'm not happy about it. I only wanted to sell half of it. Because SRNE looks like it's getting bought up. SRNE is probably going to like 30 or something. Yeah, I'm not. Unless it goes down to my average, I'm not selling. I'm so pissed right now that I'm out of it. Mm -hmm. God damn it. Fucking E-Trade, man. These fucks. Oh, that pisses me off. I don't know if I'm the only one that's having that problem that, like, right at the market open, I press sell, right? And then normally up in my order status, it'll say, you know, pending or completed, and you hear, like, a little, makes a little sound. We're selling off now if you want to get back in. I might, I might get back in right here near 9 because 9 is the breakout. It was the, the high from from Monday, or I mean from Friday. So I might, as Henry would say, dabble. There you go, dabble. Dabble, 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 dude. All right, I'm buying. Give me an execution, fuckers. Damn it, it's coming right back. All right, I got, I got a shitty execution. That, well, I guess it wasn't too bad. I got some in 952. This thing is getting bought up like crazy. Look at that candle, man. That one minute candle. I mean, it dipped down to 925, and just fucking buyers just scooped that shit up. Invax squeezing up to 51. WTRH up to three bucks. CODX rolling over. Sort of. A little bit. If I knew how to trade options, I would just fucking do an options trade on CODX. I would I would do I don't know, invest three thousand dollars. For like a month long option. That's my next uh, plan and goal is to learn how to do options. Mark Crook did an options webinar just a couple of weeks ago. I need to look it up and re. I, I missed it. I didn't watch it. All right, so we are pulling back on SRNE. I nine is going to be my risk on SRNE because that's the high from Friday. Yeah, that's the high from Friday. So definitely gonna, I'm gonna probably add a little bit down here. You think it's gonna drop below nine? Maybe a little bit. All right, I added at 906. It might drop below, you know, we'll see. I do think it's gonna bounce at nine. Hence why I bought it into that panic. So my new average is 929, so a little bit underwater. I mean, it did drop to 842. That was the lowest from that dip this morning. True. 
Like, I'm not expecting it to hold nine perfectly, but right around in here, I'm thinking it should bounce somewhere. Did it just get halted? I hope not. I think it got halted on the way down. No bueno. Still moving on my end. I think you're swim. Uh, I don't know. It looks halted Damn. to me. Damn. Well, it's shit. Me to sell the rest of my shares. Well. We're at 49 million in volume right now. I'm still holding. I'm, I'm still holding. I, I locked in already. In, like I said, this stock will have to get down to $3 for me just to break even. <laughs> well, just because it's getting halted on the way down doesn't mean it's going to... You know what I mean? Doesn't mean it's just going to go straight down anyways. No, it's just because all the people... We're selling. Let me look at it. It went from it's at 49 million volume. So right when the market was opening, it was at like 24 million. So it just doubled in volume, basically, within the last like minute or two. <sighs> well, that sucks. Got halted. Look at that dump from 10 to uh, all the way down to 860. It'll have a nice bounce here in a little bit. I mean, it might dump some more. So I'm going to add to my long into more panic because I think it's going to have a bounce. MGNX, wow. MGNX is uh heading near the highs. Glad I didn't get stubborn with that short. Mark down to 140. It tried to spike. Now it's kind of trying to find some support. CODX climbing. CODX starting to bounce a little bit. Okay, I told you not to short that sucker this morning. Henry, it's moved a dollar. Huh? It's only moved a dollar. Well, you'd be under water by a dollar a share well that's why that's why I covered it it's because it's down so much I mean like Christ it's got to bounce right that's right but I am glad it's I am glad it's uh, CODX is moving up because I do have an order to short I'm going to short the bounces on CODX probably going to start shorting it around like I don't know I Probably take some here at 19, actually. Just a little starter short. Just the baby starter short. And then I'm going to add to it. When I think of CODX, I think of it more of as like a swing trade idea of multiple days. Which I almost swung my short on Friday, but I was like, nah. I was like, then I don't have to pay any overnight fees. And I'm sure, and it's probably due for a bounce. Yeah, most uh, most my most a lot of my I play at the casino all the time. I play poker at the casino a lot, 
and so like a lot of the players, some of the players that are 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 actually professional dealers, and so but actually the girl that that deals for us, she's actually not a professional dealer, but um, since my butt some of my friends are professional dealers, they we all trained her, so now she knows how to do. So she just comes and deals the game for tips, and she's she's pretty and she's like personable. The guys like flirting with her. Sometimes she'll make make food and bring Ooh, it to us. He's uh, open. All right, we're starting to get a little bit of a bounce. And I got some short on uh, on CODX at at nineteen. And there's a lot of plays today. ACB's going higher. Oh yeah, I forgot about ACB. Look at SRNE bounce. Bounce, baby. Go to 30. <laughs> I don't know, dude. This stock is pretty hyped up. Oh. I kind of think that it, it is going to go to like like 20 or something. I don't know. We're approaching 54 million volume. So... I think nine o'clock on Friday it hits over sixty million, and we're approaching that. So, there's no way it can have five hundred million again today, can it? Uh, I don't think so, but no. But you never know. We'll find out in six hours. <laughs> ACB spiking. Yeah, I'm butthurt. I'm butthurt about that one. Wow. Up to 16 bucks. Damn, nice multi-day runner. And I'm mad because I would have just dabbled. I bought like 100 shares at $5 and five or around 5 bucks. I don't know why I didn't. Because I don't like making money on... Whatever. So you, you were thinking about buying it and you didn't? Yeah, remember I told you? I love reverse splits. When they first come out, it, it reverse split, like opened at 8 bucks, And then it had sell-off for a couple of days. It got down to like 5.30. I had an, a, an alert set that if it dropped below $5, I was going to get in. But it never did. It hit 5.30. That was oh. so low. And then it just, that was Thursday. And then since Thursday, it's just been freaking doing what it's doing. <clears throat> Did and then you, I didn't get into Friday. So you already up so much. And, but did you notice it that it was at near five? Yeah. Oh, you were just like it's not below five yet, so I'm not gonna get it. Correct. It was going down pretty good. I'm like, well, it's good. the way it's been going down. I'm like, it's gonna go to get under five bucks, so I'll wait. But oh. it didn't. And that was Thursday, and then I forget what we were doing, but there was so many other things going, so I wasn't really. I had my alert set, and I wasn't really watching it. Pulling back right now, ACB. Yeah, I'm not. It's, I'm not buying it. It's too expensive for me right now. But I love risk first splits because nine times out of ten they do that. Whatever they open up, they usually pull back a couple bucks or whatever, and then they make a run. What about what about SRNE? What's it gonna do? It's gonna looks like it's basing here at nine, huh? Say hopefully it can start to consolidate around nine dollars and then make a make a push. Do, 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 do. 
All right, I bought some more SRNE at nine bucks. Dang, I just went man. long ALJJ at 51 cents. ALJJ. I'm going to see if it holds VWAP and the 50. There we go. Nice pop. Almost 55. Yeah. Only about 1,000 shares, so we'll see. A L J J. Yep, A L J J. Up to fifty cents. That's almost at sixty. I bought it at fifty-one cents. Once it came back and reclaimed VWAP, and it's holding now. I'm gonna start selling at sixty cents here. What price did you get it at? Fifty-one. Fifty-one. Listen to Henry, he gets mad if I don't if I don't hear it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There, I just sold some at 60. Next time I'm going to sell at 65 here. Henry sounded like my wife just now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ever since the virus, you're right, Jonathan, ever since the virus, E-Trade has been a little sketchy. It's usually only at the market open, though, whenever everything really is moving really super fast. So if you look at the chart in the AJ, ALJJ, the reason I bought that just now. Oh shit, that thing's really I moving for you, dude. Yeah, I seen it on Friday. If you look Friday after hours, it hit 90 cents and then pulled back. And then it was, I actually found it because of Weeble on their after hours charts. And I'm like, oh, I'll put an alert on this if it gets over 50 cents again and holds. And I got that alert, and I literally, when I told you at 51 cents, I got the alert like 30 seconds before that, and I seen it moving, and I'm like, I'm going to jump right in. It's got a float no, of 22 million? Damn, dude, this thing is really spiking. I just sold some more at 74 cents. I'm up 200 bucks on it already. ALJJ. I hope it gets to a dollar. I'm selling it all at... Think it'll get to a dollar? It got halted. Boom. I'm going to cancel my cells that I got put in since it just got halted. Look at oh, that. Yeah. How did that one get on your radar? Huh? How did that one get on your radar? I just... Okay, let me repeat. So if you look at the After Hours Friday. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. After Hours. You saw it Weeble on After Hours and it went up. Yeah. So you were already watching it this morning. Or yeah, just I see now. it this morning, but I'm like, oh shit, there's no volume, it's not doing nothing. But I had my alert set at 50 cents because of the after hours, it hit 90 cents and then pulled all the way back to like 55 cents or so. But then the volume kind of died out, so I'm like, eh. But I had an alert set. That's why I, I love the alerts, man. Especially if you remember to put them in. But I checked it this morning and I'm like, ah, no volume, it's not doing nothing, it's actually going down. I'm like, well, I'll keep my alert still at 50 cents if it hits it. As soon as I hit it, I seen the volume was coming in. I literally seen my alert and bought a thousand shares within like forty five seconds. <laughs> I'm like, that's going. I wasn't hesitating. I was jumping on the board. I was buying into strength. But I just sold most of my shares into that push. I only have two hundred twenty five shares left, so we're over nine with SRNE. I put a I put a stop loss on my SRNE at eight eighty three, so just below this candle. It's looking pretty good, man. Looks like a nice dip buy, so far. What's funny? What's funny, Jorge? Yeah, what are you laughing at, Jorge? You can't just put LOL. Uh, I use E Trade Pro, unfortunately, and. Uh, Henry uses Think or Swim. When you might get a dollar out of Hexos moving in sympathy with ACB, it's at 70 cents today. I could squeeze to a dollar. 
I'd get into it, but I'm already in this one and SRNE and Mark, so I'm in three trades, so I'm not, I can't do any more. I got to sit on my hands. I'm literally sitting on my hands right now because I want to buy Hexo, but I, I don't want to be in four trades. The weed plays. They're starting to fire up a little bit. Right, SRNE still holding nine. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Come on. Maybe. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh, what? Never mind. I'm starting to get bought up a little bit. There it goes. I'm going to hit my stop loss. It's 890. All right. SRNE took me out. See what happens. Might rebuy it if it holds low a day. Maybe it puts in a double bottom here. I don't know. I'm conflicted. About what? To sell the rest of my SRNE shares or because of such a great entry, just ride it out and see if this thing can be a $15, $20 stock tomorrow or Wednesday or today yet. Uh, what if you just step set your stop loss at 850? I thought about with, that. You know what I mean? 840, actually. No, put it at 850. You know, better than that. Well, you know, just below it. All right. ALJJ is open. It is open. Go to a dollar. Go to a dollar. Hell yeah, go to a dollar. Only got a million volume right now. It's up 118 percent. Ah, it's pulling back. That's all right. Do you sell anything to that push? On ALJJ? I mean, you got yes, it at like 50-something cents. Yes, Brian. I only have 225 shares left. I sold 775 shares into that push. Sweet. You going to add on this dip? Nope. I'm going to just keep my 225 shares and see what it does. I got my stop loss set at... 50 cents, so it takes me out. I break even on those, so I can't lose on the trade. There you go, kids. Textbook trading from a true professional. Yeah, right. Far from it. Maybe in a couple years. I mean, technically, this is my job, so I guess it would be a professional, but I'm no way near a professional. If that makes any sense. Jorge, I make him repeat shit all the fucking time. He does. All the time. It's because sometimes he'll be saying something and I'll be making a decision on what I'm doing on my own personal trade. I'll be sitting there thinking about, hmm, should I keep letting myself get squeezed on CODX or should I uh, just eat the loss now? You know what I mean? Meanwhile, Henry's in the background being like, I'm buying this, bringing in the strength. I'm buying this. I give him ticker overload a lot. And then I'll and then I'll look at the ticker and I'll be like, oh shit, look at that thing. Yeah. And then I'll be like, what did you get it at? And he'll be like, fucking Brian. I'm not you know what? 
I'm not a multitasker. Okay? My, I can't do multiple things at one time. Ask my wife. She knows that. One time, ALJJ one, giving it up. One time she wanted me to kiss her and play her the coochie at the same time, and I just screwed that up all to hell. <laughs> okay, last week I was making fun of the New Mexico education system. And to be perfectly honest, it wasn't the New Mexico education system for my bad grades. It's because I was an unattentive, bad student. Is Mark giving it all up here, or is this just the opportunity to add some more? I took it off my fucking screen. I was oh. thinking it was going to bounce, and it didn't. And uh, I mean, it's I not really... That's... It's not red on the day. One, one thirty is the red to green, so... 130? All right, that's, that's what I put my stop loss in, and then... Yeah, I mean, if anything, right now, to me, it looks like a buy. But then again, I thought that on... On Friday, and it really hasn't bounced. It should bounce, though. I'm thinking it should bounce. It might take a little bit for it to bounce, though. It might need a, a day or two. Well, I got in after hours Friday, 135. I sold some this morning at 150, so I'll just put my stop up, my entry at 135. Yeah, it's kind of bouncing right now a little bit. Yeah. That way I don't have to watch it. I'll just put my stop loss in there. Takes me out, it takes me out. If I check it in half an hour, it's at a dollar sixty. I'll sell some. I'm really focus on SRNE. I want it to do something for me. <laughs> Just for you, Henry. We're approaching seventy-two million, so we have more volume, I think, today than we did Friday at this time. Am I right or wrong? How? Let me go back see if I can figure that out. Friday. That was all after hours. I I hop back in SRNE at 890. I think I'm going to risk the low of this candle, 871. It looks like it's about to do it right now. Come on, you fucker, hold up. I should risk 850. I should risk 850. I'm going to risk 850. I mean, I already made two grand on it today, so why not risk a few hundred bucks? Especially when I think it's going to holding up. It's holding. Looks like it's holding up. Sort of, I guess. I don't know. It's got this downward trend that kind of looks gay as fuck. The more it holds 850, the happier I am, so. Yeah, I'll use 850. I mean, I'm if not, you look at... I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let myself get shook out by a little bit of a... I mean, pre-market there. I mean, choppy when it price up, action. A lot of support from 9 to 850 pre-market. I mean, before it made that squeeze to 1061. So, hopefully, that will be the new support level. That'd be amazing. Damn. Because mm -hmm. then when I sell it on Wednesday for $35, I'll be like, sweet. <laughs> CODX giving it up. The morning spike is failing. Man, I need to cover some actually. Cover a little bit into this. Covered some CODX, shorter to 19, covered it 17.85. So what is everybody else in or watching or? They're watching the same shit we are, dude. You don't know that? They could be looking at something else. Something with no volume. Man, I'm... This is this this SRNE is consolidating nicely right here. Like yeah. I'm I'm like keep I'm trying to keep myself from adding to my position. <clears throat> so this is the start. You can see what 
let's say I wasn't in this already and you asked me, what do you think about this? It's starting, like, I would be interested right now. It's starting to go sideways, consolidating. It's getting bought up from 880. Even though I lost 300 bucks on Friday playing poker, I had a lot of fun for some reason. Scotty makes me laugh so much, Henry. Yeah, Friday was fun. I ended up, I mean, I think I cashed out like 140 ahead. So you made you made some money. Yeah. Dude, how how about isn't that crazy whenever Danimal River quads on me? <laughs> it was I yeah. I I flopped a set of jacks and Danimal flopped a set of sevens. The flop was like jack seven three. And I was like, I got this motherfucker. And then the turn I don't know what, remember what the turn was, but the river was a seven and we got it all in. And I lost. He had quads. Can't believe you're rivered quads. Man, this SRNE, should I add? Fuck, I feel like it's going to go. Brian's got a feeling that it's going to squeeze for him and me. Maybe not. Fuck it, I'm adding. Can't help it. S-A-B-E just hit my high day scanner up 22% and... Oh, oh, no, as soon as I add it, it starts to dump. You fucker. Come on, man. Don't do me like that. Don't do me like that. All right, I'm not adding no more. I'm going to set the stop loss. Yeah, 850 is going to have to be my uncle. When I say my uncle, I mean like, uncle, I give up. I give up. I'm super conflicted, man. About what? Well, I don't want to sell at 850 and then be all out of it when I have such a low average. And then all of a sudden it squeezes because I don't want to buy back in at $9. I think I'm just going to. Then hold it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. What did name shot did? I'd have to go back. I think he said six fifty. If it doesn't hold that, it's gonna be done. Oh, five eighties was his was his level. Was it five eighty? Okay. Five eighty, yeah. I'm not gonna give that much back. I don't. I think I'm gonna put my my uncle. I think will be seven dollars because that's what it held all after hours Friday. If, if it don't hold that, I'm gonna just and I'll still be a dollar fifty a share. I just don't want to get scared out at 850 and then it pulls back to like 8 and then climbs back up and tomorrow or Wednesday it's a 15 or $20 stock and I'll be like cursing at myself. I've, seen, I've had it happen to me so many times. Not sure. me, man. My 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 I'd uncle. I for... at five bucks, you know, and I had freaking. Uh, please double bottom here. SRNE, come on, man. Don't give it up. I'm begging you. Oh, it's going to give it up, isn't it? Yeah, like I said, I mean, it might pull back, but, like, I mean, mm, I already got $78 million in volume. Hasn't 850 yet. Oh. I don't think it's going to get $500 million volume today, but I can see it getting an easy $300 million volume. Sellers are coming in full force. Hmm. 
I'm gonna get, gonna get bought up right here. Meanwhile, CODX, I just shorted some more on this little pop. I covered down here in the 1780s, and then I shorted some here at 1757. Yeah, Jonathan, that's why I did sell some into that push this morning at 1050, because I'm like, ah, gotta. <laughs> Like I said, I, I don't. I only have a hundred shares left, so it's not like I got a thousand shares or anything, you know. <sighs> Meanwhile, my ALJJ's bouncing off a of BWAP nicely. Squeeze, motherfucker! I'm not liking the long either, Jonathan. It's looking pretty dismal, isn't it? It's looking pretty dismal. I might sell into this uh, little bounce right here. Maybe not all of it, but some of it. Well, I was going to sell in the 870s, but it didn't really. I thought I was going to bounce a little more to the 880s. If it holds over 850. Your uh, your ALJJ is bouncing off that 60 real nice. Come on, hold 850. I may have overstayed my welcome trying to went back to the well on the long side on this SRNE and I don't know if it's going to work out. I mean it's selling off though but it's not selling off like crazy for how much it's up. You know? Yeah. Meanwhile, look at my Saba come back like a boss. I'm not selling that until it hits three bucks. It's at 223. Yeah. Well, I added more Friday. So my average right now is two bucks. So it's been holding two dollars pretty good. So that was that Zip Trader guy. That was one of his stock picks this week, and I'm like, I'm already ahead of you, buddy. And he was saying it could, you know, it has a chance to get to three or better. It's not going to go all the way back to eight dollars, but I don't want that. I only want three bucks. I think we'll get it this week sometime. Yeah, the volume's nothing like it was on Monday or on Friday. Mm. It's got over 82 million. Come on, you fucker. What did the... <clears throat> at 9.09 on Friday, how much volume was there? And there's 8.50. Boom. Through 8.50. Oh. Just below it. No, it's getting bought up at 850, 860. Look at that. I like that sign. Gave it up and then it just uh, popped right back. Man.
Look at that. Buyer stepped in. I'm glad I didn't put I I'm glad I was doing a manual instead of an automatic stop loss. Cause if I would have put my stop loss in at like eight forty five or eight forty eight, it would have just took me out immediately. Ooh, nasty candle on the ALJJ. SRNE cracking 850 now. Hmm. No bueno. So you move you took your stop loss off of the eight fifty, huh? Yep. Henry? Yep. Now it's down to eight. I'm just gonna watch it. I mean it's selling off, but it's not like it's not like <sighs> selling off super crazy yet. I'm not ready to cut it just yet. Hell, I might even add to it. There you go. Now the now it's starting to speed up a little bit on the downside. Okay, I added a little bit there at eight eighteen. All right, added in on that little dip down to eight eighteen. So now when it bounces, I'll probably just sell two thirds of it into the bounce and hold the other one third, and maybe it can maybe we can get a reversal and it'll start going up. So. A lot of shorts probably be covering right now. If I was short, I'd be covering into this little dip right here. Or I'd be covering some of my short into this. And then I bet you there's a lot of dip buyers wanting to buy near the whole dollar number, near eight. And it is off the highs. I mean, it is two dollars off the highs. Tim Sykes just bought SIML at Point zero zero nine cents. He's buying buying this low price runner. Normally, I don't like sub penny plays. Whatever, Tim. You always buy the you always buy the sub penny plays. He's always buying them. What's but the low price about? plays have been on fire. So I'll buy this high day breakout. Goal is to make twenty to forty percent today. I don't like the sub penny plays either. That poor INUV sold off. S I M L. Wow, it's squeezing. He got it at nine cents. It's now at or at 
point zero nine zero zero nine. Now it's at point zero fifteen. Dang. It's a pretty big percentage gain. Some people are talking about KTOV. I keep seeing that ticker in the chat. I traded that a week or two ago. And it is moving. Is there any bouncing a little bit? So what about now, Henry? Look at SRNE. Would you would you like to dip by SRNE now? Yeah, I'd buy it at eight thirty. You buy like eight nineteen. So you like it now for a buy. I like it. Aurora Cannabis squeezed up to 17, sold off all the way down to 1450. It's pretty volatile. Mhm. Mm Big time. And now it's bouncing up to 16. Is this already going to go back to 10? I hope. We hope so. You hope so? I hope so. I already just got taken out though on that. I said I was gonna I would risk eight nineteen and it would just hit that. So That's a that's a good point that the major volume didn't come in till later in the day, Jonathan, on S R N E. Yep, K T O V I mean it's it's breaking out on the daily chart. It's squeezing. Does your E-Trade show, like, Friday at this time, 9.20, how much volume SRNE had? Yeah. What's it show? Uh, shows, uh, at 9.20 on Friday? Yeah. Um... shows sorry just that one the one minute candle at at, at 920 yeah well, no like the total volume at that point in time oh up to leading up to that yeah uh <clears throat> i don't i don't i can't get the total volume i can just get the volume for that that for that that can't what the hell my E-Trade Pro just quit out of nowhere. Jesus Christ. It just like, it just, the whole, the whole, it just disappeared. Like a magic trick. 
Jesus Christ, D Trade Pro. Dude. E Trade Pro's got the COVID, man. <laughs> it's got something. Dude, it's all sketchy. I'm trying I don't to... think I'd buy KTOV up here. I try to get it closer to VWAP around sixty cents. It just looks like it's gonna pull back. I'm trying to figure out if I want to short Aurora cannabis or not. <laughs> I think I'm just leave it alone. Let it play out. I'm thinking about shorting this bounce near 16, but it's the third green day on Aurora Cannabis. ACB. Yes, yeah, third green day. All right, so uh, I put my stop loss up a little bit higher in ALJJ, 52 cents, so. Just took me out. So I made like 150 bucks on it. Not too bad for... Not bad at all, Henry. But I'm going to keep it on the chart. See if it holds 50 cents. I want to make another push. My, my dabble again. Hey, where's everybody from? Put, put, put your... The, your town and state where you're from. I'm in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Henry's in North Liberty, Iowa. Come on, E-Trade Pro. Fire back up. Connection failed. Is your internet down? Uh. No, you wouldn't be able to live stream probably if your internet was down. So yeah, that's true. It. Plus, I wouldn't be able, like I see them coming through on the uh, on the chat. Uh, Bertie's from the UK. Wow. Lakeland, Florida. Jonathan was Same. born in Iowa. Where at? Palkesh is in St. Louis. I like St. Louis. California, Jorge's from. Kansas City, Missouri. St. Ori Louis, Missouri, got a couple. Origi Brian Dem's originally from Mongolia. He's a descendant of uh, Genghis Khan. Probably. I don't know where I heard it at, but apparently Genghis Khan is responsible for like it's like 3% or 4% of the Asian population because I guess he had babies everywhere he went. Something. Huh? It was on a TV show or a movie or something. I think it was on Limitless. Was it? I've heard it in a couple of different places. Well, that's where I recently, I think, heard it because when you just said that, I'm like, I just heard that on a show I watched not too long ago. I know it. it I bet it was Limitless. Hey, look at that. Jonathan's from Iowa City, Henry. Go Hawkeyes. He's in Tulsa, Oklahoma right now. Yeah, Brian is a... He is a... Uh, or he's from Napa, California. That's cool. Look at Aurora right back to the highs. SRNE starting to look strong, baby. You still on it, right? Yeah, I am. I, I mean, my E Trade Pro. It's over 101 million volume and growing. I think it's going to hit 300 million volume today. S R N E. Yep, third away there already. I mean, it's not going to hit 500 million, obviously, but. Oh, wow, it's back up to 857. Yeah. 
All right. Squeeze them shorts. Come on. Look at that. Aurora Cannabis. What a great dip buy down at 15. Aurora, Aurora Cannabis. New high day. Glad I didn't short that little shitty bounce over VWAP. Might get smacked down right here, though. Maybe I talked about this one, too, didn't he? He did talk about Aurora Cannabis. Does anybody else in the chat room trade full time or everybody have jobs and just everybody on a COVID break? I'm I'm uh I'm actually planning on uh, I'm gonna buy a Tesla with my trading profits. Okay. A C B. Alright, got my E Trade Pro back up. I don't know, man. I'm not a Tesla fan, but I was born and raised. I'm a muscle car guy, so I like the. Henry, have you have you ever been have you ever been in a Tesla? Yes. No, you haven't. I have two. A guy when I worked at Geico, he had one. I just don't like the way the outsides look, and that they just seem. I don't. I don't know. Not everybody has to like them. I'm more of a muscle car. Give me a old. Mustang. I've had multiple Mustangs or an old Camaro or old anything in from the 60s, 70s. Mm. I like oh, those yeah. too. MVIS at 95 cents. Is that making a run again? MVIS. Oh yeah. Well, it's popping over a dollar. I didn't put out any news or anything today. I wonder why it's moving. Wow, look at SRNE. It's coming back strong. I like it. Keep going. <clears throat> All right, I just sold some into that bounce at 871. So you tell you what, man, if it breaks through VWAP nine dollars and eight cents, it's definitely gonna test ten bucks for sure. But it's gotta get through that VWAP, so Hey, trade with Lad works works at Geico in Lakeland. <laughs> yeah, Henry used to work at Geico for twelve years. Yeah, I quit in February. Yep. He's been quitting February and he's been trading ever since. How long have you worked there? Yeah, I, I want to be a full-time trader. I don't want to go back to my my regular job. You know, if you weren't married and have kids, you probably would be already... That's that's true. But I decided I'm going to start phasing myself out of my business a little bit. I'm going to whenever when we go back to work for the COVID, I'm going to I'm going to relinquish some of my salary. I decided I'm going to relinquish some of my salary, give it to one of my employees, and then I'm going to reduce my responsibility a little bit and slowly over time I'm going to keep doing that and as I replace my salary with my trading profits. That's the thing I love about trading is that every every damn day it's like Christmas. It's like what presents does the market have for daddy today? <laughs> Look at that. Trade with Valid has been there six years and he's quitting next month. So Geico, you got to be there six years and you're fully vested in your 401k. So whatever Geico put in, then it's all yours. You don't got to give it back. So a lot of people quit around the six-year mark. <clears throat> I think that's what most companies, though, once you're like 401k, I think it's like five or six years, whatever the company puts in, you're fully vested. 
But if you quit at like two years, you only get like 20% of whatever the company puts in, things like that. Brian, when's the last time you actually worked for a company or, or somebody else besides yourself? Um, like, let me like think. A, did you ever have a legit full-time job or did you just... I was in the army, dude. No, I know. I mean... Um, no, I mean, I... I mean, I got fired from a few restaurants. Um, uh, see what else. So you never had like no corporate job or anything? No, no, no. I never had anything like the biggest, most corporate job I ever had was the army. Other than that, I just had shitty jobs where like you know, yeah. No, I never had a corporate job or anything like that. Back up to 232. Squeeze, bitch. It'd be awesome if I could get $3 out of that today. I doubt it, but that'd be nice. Might sell a little couple hundred shares at 250. We'll see. Alright, so SRNE, so... I'm hoping this is the bottom on SRNE right here. Yeah, hopefully it just pulled back a little bit now and starts making, you know, higher lows. Yeah, I'm hoping that it puts in a, a low right here and then it, we, we can get a bounce and a squeeze back towards 10. God, it'd be great if this thing was a multi-day runner. Heck yeah. If this I thing, talking, it, oh, I want us to be talking about it on Friday, and they said thirty dollars, and we'll be like, "Glad we didn't sell." <laughs> well, let's not kid ourselves. If, if it starts to hit, if this thing goes to thirty bucks, there's no way in hell I'm going to be there for it. Yeah, me neither. Probably unless I keep like ten shares just to see. But yeah, I mean, if it starts to go and. Christ, if it goes to 15, I'll be surprised if I'm there for that. Yeah. I'm going to be... Dude, I'm going to... I'm going to sh fucking shit a solid gold brick if it makes it to 10. Actually, I shouldn't be that pessimistic. I think it can make it to 10. It can get back to high a day. Yeah. So the spy is holding strong above VWAP 293. So that's good. What about INO? We haven't thought about that one in a while. <clears throat> see what INO is doing. INO is spiking a little bit. Testing high day. INO looking like it wants to squeeze. Doobie doo, crack your whip. <laughs> I have a tick. I have to say that usually five times a day or so, or more. Some, sometimes he sometimes he doesn't call out Scooby Doo. Sometimes he calls out my name. Tells me to crack my whip. I get all excited when he does that. I go. Brian, 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 crack your whip. Oh, shit. Missed the freaking alert on that. YCBD just came over VWAP. Ooh, I might be a potential buy here if it holds. YCBD. Good job, yeah. Henry. Way to set the alert. If it, uh... Oh. I'm, I'm dabbling. I'm already in. 143. The Let's weed plays are hot, VWAP. man. I might have to go with you on this one. VWAP. If it holds VWAP or not. I'm going to risk 135. 135, that's it? You should be risking like no, 124, 125. No, because I'll just rebuy if it starts to go 
Because if, if, if it doesn't hold that, I don't think it's going to hold VWAP. Eh, I'm not even going to hold. I'm going to do a. It's not moving that fast, so I'm actually not even going to put a stop loss in. I'm just going to watch it. All right, Henry, I'm going to follow you. Because it can pull back a little bit on the VWAP and then come back up and then regain it and go. The weed plays are hot. I think it's going to come back with it or with. Uh... I'm, I'm in. Not like it takes that much to really convince me to get in, but. <laughs> you had to fucking these. twist my arm. Let me pull ACB up on the <clears throat> my other chart here. Well, I like the fact that ACB is. Dude, ACB is breaking yeah. out. It's going higher. It's squeezing yeah. up. So, I mean, why wouldn't this one? Exactly. Shit. In fact, I want to add shares. I'm going to add shares. I have an order to buy at 130 actually, in case it pulls back to that little consolidation area there. But I might just hold VWAP here and start to take off. I mean, shit, it hit 211 pre market, so I mean, it should be able to hit 150, 160, maybe 170. I don't think it'll. Gibby dibby deal. Crack your wind. 8 million volume right now. What's the float? What's your float say? I got. I have 35 Yahoo. million. Yeah, Yahoo says 32 million, so not a super low float. Could be just a little a grinder one here for now. <clears throat> It's getting bought up at 139 and 140, so I like, I like it. I like it. I like it. We're in. Now we just got to let it do its thing. Anybody else think YCBD is good here? And Jamie's asking you a question on the okay. chat. Brian, you were stationed at Fort Stu No, I was uh I worked at Wynn Army Hospital twenty eight to twenty fifteen. Oh wow, nice. Thank you for your service, sir. I was stationed at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Uh -huh. I just added another some more shares because I think it's gonna go here. It's looking strong. Home of the airborne. 80 second. All right, I'm selling a little bit of my. I sold a quarter of my uh, SRNE right there in the 860s. Yeah, this is this trade's looking good, Henry. Thank you for uh, talking me into it. YCBD. I actually recently started smoking marijuana again. No joke. I haven't smoked when I was a when I was a teenager in high school. I used to fucking for some reason I thought I couldn't live without weed. And then I went to the army, which they made me quit. And then recently I decided that uh, I'm gonna start smoking again. Not much though, just a little bit. It helps him play poker better. It does actually. Relaxes him because he's pretty, uh. Because I'm a fucking action junkie. Yeah, he's pretty, uh. No patience. So aggressive. Kinda... I'm aggressive. Let's put it that way. I uh, raise a lot. I play a lot of pots. I mix it up. He does. I like to have fun.
I'm liking how the YCBD didn't just pull right back below VWAP. Looks like it's trying to trying to regain it for a push up. I don't like to smoke too much weed though, because it makes me feel paranoid and dumb. Just a little bit, like one hit. That's all I need. One hit, just to take the edge off. You know what I mean? All of a sudden, I think I'm Mr. Cool. ACB squeezing. I love the fact that ACB is squeezing the fuck out of shorts right now because that is only going to help YCBD because we're moving in sympathy. Fort St Where is Fort Stewart at? Is that Washington? Henry, why don't you just ask that question instead of writing in chat? Because <laughs> I wanted to just write it in chat. Oh, okay. Look at that. We're going higher with YCBD. Look at that. We're breaking high a day right there. Okay. A really, really good trader right now. When it's when it's breaking out, breaking high a day. Well, I guess it hasn't quite broke high a day yet. Be about ready to add some more to they, it. They would add. Like, someone that's really good, but I don't have it in me right now. Look at that, squeezing. We should get a... Actually, I'm going to sell a little bit into this push over high day. So, a good trader adds a bad trader. So, Spryne's selling. He always sells early, so I just bought another 100 shares. All right. I'm going to let it squeeze a little bit more, and then I'm going to sell into that. There we go. Sold a little bit. I only sold a quarter. I'm thinking this is just the beginning of it. You might be right, actually. So I'm going to sit on my hands. I mean, can it go to 175? Be patient. SRNE, man. I'm liking it. I mean, it is an earnings winner. SRNE? It's not a super high flow. So, I'm going to just let it play out. Because it could go up to like, let's say 160, pull back, come down, and just stay above VWAP now the rest of the day. That's the race moving. That's the other weed play. Made some money on that a few weeks ago. I think I bought that. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, it's about to hit nine bucks. I bought it at like, I think five bucks. And I, was, I sold most of it at seven and that. Because then it kind of was bouncing from seven to six. And... The weed plays are moving. So I'm sick of hand sanitizer. My hands are, my knuckles are like cracking from like fucking hand sanitizer drying my shit up. I 
Look at SRNE baby setting up nicely, making higher lows. I know, huh? We might get back. We might get back to ten. Look at that break, SRNE. Break 885. It's going to test VWAP for sure. Probably won't push through VWAP right away. Probably go up to nine bucks, get rejected, pull back to 880 or so, and then make another push. But tell you what, if it ends up reclaiming VWAP, she's going to make a run today. That's just my opinion. This is for pure entertainment value only. Don't do what I do. Come on. I think my keyboard is... Yeah, I went to the Nashville twi tri uh, trip both times. <laughs> like I said, I've been there since I was there 12 years, so I had two chairman trips that hit Nashville. I went to the Bahamas. I went to where else did we go? Where the hell did I go? Bahamas, Nashville twice for work. For work, yeah, for, for Geico. If you're the top seller at Geico, you get a free trip. I got, went on a cruise to the Bahamas, Nashville twice, Washington, and I made it five times. What the hell is Oh, my God. Look at that SRNE. I'm not selling anymore. I'm going to wait. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick my stop loss in at 825, 824, and then, and then I'm going to... The other times I made... Come back in a week. A bronze and a couple silvers. I like how in your thinker swim try to get two dollars and eighty one cents in your account. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I gotta cash that out. <laughs> why do you even have that in like how, what did you put how did you get two dollars and eighty one cents in your account? Well, cause at one time I had probably like two or three thousand in there and I busted it. Mm. And that's when I, or either I busted it or I transferred out. I can't even remember. Oh. One of the two. I probably busted oh. it. That's why there's 281. Here's a test of VWAP. It's coming up. SRNE, baby. It, I'm going to say it's going to get rejected. I don't think it's going to go right through it. I think it's going to get rejected, pull back to about 880, 875 maybe, and then make another push. On SRNE? Yeah. I mean, I'd love it just to break through and go now, but I just see it pulling back. Bernie Damn. just said SRNE is about to be on CNBC. Are you serious? Oh, that's what he put. Could you imagine if they came on and said it's like FDA approved the trial testing for this? The stock will go bananas. B A N A N A Annas. Bananas. Bananas. Anybody else hop in on the dip buy on uh, SRNE? Do you guys follow Steven Ducks? I actually traded with Steven Ducks in person one time. I was in, uh, a couple years ago, I was in Florida. Uh, I traded with him and Gratani and. Mark Crook and Tim Bowen and then a few other traders. There's like 15 of us in a room down in Florida and South Beach. And uh, anyways, yeah, so Ducks, uh, he, you know, he has a DVD. I bought his DVD. I don't really follow him on, I don't watch his YouTube videos. But I watched his, uh, I bought his DVD. I, I watched the whole thing. I, wa I bought his, I bought Rolling Wolves. I watched both of those. Um... I remember when I traded with Ducks, though, he, he, okay, so there was like a, a chalkboard in the room, or a dry erase board, and he was trying to explain something about, like, when he was deciding to short, and but how he, he would use some kind of statistics where he would calculate the volume from, like, the last year or two, 
with the volume of that day, with the price range of how much it's moved, the range, the percentage it's moved, and then he would come up with this, some kind of formula, and that would like kind of determine when he's ready to enter. It was strange. He explained it, but I retained about, well, you just heard what I retained. <laughs> about 1% of it. It was way over my head. He would have to explain it more than once. He was going through it really fast, and it was just, I was, I felt like an idiot. I did say, I was sitting next to him though. He did keep me in a short trade longer than I normally would have stayed in it. So I made extra money. I remember I made 600 bucks on that trade that day and he was sitting next to me and he was in the exact same trade. I actually got a better entry than him, and, but he kept me in longer. Uh, I made 600 bucks and he made 40,000. So one thing I like about TD Ameritrade, Thinkorswim, so I just pulled up CNBC. I can actually watch it through the Thinkorswim platform. Oh, so where at? Here, I'll do it right now on here. Where do I go? Yeah. So go to your uh, the very bottom left corner. Okay. There's that little plus thing. Oh. And then you go to Live TV, News? Uh, Traver T Trader TV. Trader TV. Oh, okay. And then once you have that up, then you'll, at the bottom of it, you'll... Put something up? CNB, CNB, uh, CNBC US? That's what I put on, yeah. Very good for I'm the population. About right now. That about right now. Can you hear that? For elderly which is difficult to generate the uh, strong immunity. Can you hear it? The, uh, Can you section he of the Could you hear it whenever it was turned on? Hello? Henry? Sorry, I'm trying to listen to it. Oh, they are talking about Sorrento. Look at that. Here, I'm going to turn it on. All right, I'll mute mine. We uh, are almost at the same stage right now. There is nobody has the new Oh, fuck me. Study in the next few months. And Damn it. I fucked it up. There it yeah, goes. We are at the same stage in my mouse. And uh, we will see, see uh, uh, the more the merrier. The reason is more utilizing everybody from the party. Henry, you got to turn yours off, dude. So you will see which hands on out. And Certainly, it potentially could be synergistic because uh, if you're using neutralizing antibody, that potentially have a, a effect to say uh, if the virus so mutates, some of the antibody may not work uh, after the mutation. So if you have a different angles from different antibody attack the same uh, virus, you may have well, since I'm mute on, so you need it. In the background. And also, uh, uh, you have uh, the uh, antibody potentially generate. Uh, Body resistance to it after prolonged use. So you want to have uh, multiple parties all coming here with a different type of neutralizing antibody. That's going to help us uh, tremendously. Uh, Doctor, it's David Faber. Uh, there are those who say who were focused on this to say this, it isn't that hard to generate. Difficult in terms of a timeline. Um, which that you can manufacture at significant scale. Regeneron saying they've Sound got that down to maybe what could be six months, uh, but a lot of people say that won't be the case. And my question is, how would Sorrento do it in enough time to be relevant? Yes, you know we have a, a CGMP facility in house, and we'll, at the risk we're going to manu starting manufacturing in the hundred thousand doses and up to a million doses in the next few months. And meanwhile, we have uh, collaborators with discussing right now, they have much larger scale, which in the uh, potentially of providing in the millions to tens of million doses each production run. So uh, we're prepared to uh, meet the vast demand in the next few months. Um, what data do you have to suggest that mutations in the virus wouldn't render this antibody ineffective? Uh, at this moment right now, we know the virus uh, completely preventing the 
virus infection, this antibody. Brian, are you there? Yeah, I'm listening. The virus oh, infection sorry. completely. And uh, what we see in it is right uh, that uh, we have uh, other antibody as well that works as well. And if you're putting the two together, all three together as a cocktail, we call COVID shield, that potentially could be preventing the, uh, the virus mutation so that, that the one of the antibody does not work, the other one or two still works. So that gives you a redundancy in the same uh, product. Are you making any assumptions for dosage at this point, and how can you be confident in those assumptions at this stage of development? Because we can uh, tell from the uh, immature experiment what is the concentration that potentially works to uh, complete neutralizing the virus. And we at the dose right now, we believe if we can get around a milligram per kilo, which is for 100 kilograms a person, it's about 100 milligram, which is very easy to handle. And uh, that will be a, a, a potentially sufficient and adequate quantity. So that makes uh, the manufacturer scale up much easier. We are not talking about into a, a hundred milligram per kilo type, which you need a 10 grams, mm -hmm. which is a too large a difference. But for how long? I mean, as I understand it, when treating a COVID patient with antibodies, it, it's a temporary treatment, right? It's not a cure. How long do you think yeah. that those antibodies will last? So typical t antibody half-life is uh, two weeks. However, there is technology right now. You can uh, engineer the antibody to go to up to uh, two to three months time. There is also technology right now we are uh, employing as well, testing as using the DNA format so that the potentially uh, inject the same things as the uh, Madura injecting the uh, messenger RNA into the muscle. We let the body muscle to produce it. We potentially let the DNA and uh, in the muscle to let the body produce it. That potentially can last uh, over a year or longer. And I just want to understand the timeline, Dr. Ji. So, so these results are preclinical, correct? So do you still have to test it in animals before you can start human trials? And, and what does the timeline look like there? So we are intent to get into a human in the next two to months, two to three months, especially for getting into the patient, just getting into a ICU, and that will start in treating the patient because this antibody not only can do a potentially a prevention as well as a treatment. So you go with the treatment in the ICU setting, you can get into human very quickly in the next two to three months. Then after that, then you move up to potentially get into uh, healthy uh, people. Wait, so are you saying it would be both useful as a prophylaxis and as well for those already infected, or is it gonna be one or the other? I think uh, it's potentially a work both way, and uh, we're gonna start with a treatment in the uh, patient population that gets into the ICU, then we are uh, moving into a prevention as well. And so what is the soonest that the vaccination is to generate neutralizing antibody. Now we have a neutralizing antibody in hand. Sorry to cut you off. Um, so what is the soonest that we could see your antibody cocktail actually ready for use? Uh, potentially in the next two to three months. That means sometimes in uh, around a July, August window. Got it. Dr. Ji, thank you very much for joining us today from Sorrento Therapeutics. He's still talking? Thank you for having Talk us. Carl, another... Could you not hear him, Henry? I can't have my volume on because you told me it's too loud in the background. Oh. No, I thought you could hear it on through my end. You know what I mean? I was listening. You told me to turn it off. Okay, he's done now. But it sounds... So basically they have antibodies and uh, they're getting ready to start human trials here in the next two to three months. That it, sounds pretty positive to me. It sounds fucking amazing, actually. Even if even if they don't, even if they fail completely and they fall 100% on their face and they don't get shit done, um, just the fact that they're on CNBC and they're talking about this and they're giving people hope, I think is going to bring investors and people and people wanting to buy the stock. In fact, I just added. <laughs> so another, uh, 
there's some more stuff I got to learn down to that plus thing. There's some other things on there that I got to, I want to dive into and learn a little bit better. Because they have the one there that says use the news and it shows like, if you click on it, like most active movers, pre-market movers, extended hour movers, ETFs. It's got a lot of other stuff that I haven't dove into yet on Thinkorswim. So. Wow. Use the news? Yeah. Oh, I see so, it. Looks like it's kind of like the Weeble one. It's got yeah. after hour runners, pre-market runners too. Oh, cool. I just noticed that now, so I'll get on like... That's two, neat. Check this out. Yeah, so I'm going to have to check that out today when... We're done, or we're slowing down, or whatever. Henry's going to be a thinkorswim specialist. Dude, there's I've been like almost a year now, and there's so much on here that like it's uh, this is too much. Like I don't, you know, there's just so much stuff. Like I I don't know how much E Trade has or E Trade Pro, but E Trade's got a lot of crap. Yeah, E Trade's not as good as uh, thinkorswim's platform. Hence why I bitch about it every day. Dude, I'm super bullish on this SRNE after watching that CNBC. But price action is king. So I can sit here and be bullish up the wazoo, but if it doesn't keep going up and it starts going down. That is true. My narrow ass is going to exit. Very true. And YCBD needs to hold VWAP. All right, just covered the rest of my CODX. It's starting to pop off of that, off that VWAP. Uh-oh, the baby's back in full force. Full force. I don't know what she's mad about. So, yeah, SRNE, that makes me super excited. My cousin just hit me up over the weekend and was like, hey, Brian, is there any good stocks to buy right now? And I don't know what to tell him. I don't want to say, hey, buy SRNE, and then it, you know what I mean? Hi. But I'm going to stay in this. As long as it stays over $8, I'm going to risk 8 I'm going to stay in SRNE as long as it stays over 8 for sure. I'm just going to put my stop loss in and then uh, go about my day. Go get a workout in. Say hi. Say hi. Hi. You were just, hi, you were just screaming over there. What is daddy doing? Trading. Yeah. Did daddy buy you a play set with his trading money? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, you see your, you've seen your snap. You got. <laughs> yep. We we built. We worked on the playset this weekend. Five percent completed. Yeah, the thing is enormous. It's so big. It's so huge. Thank God my neighbor's helping me. Are you excited about your playset? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He figures if he helps you, go then. Dennis then Dennis well. You want to go do what? Go Dennis. You, I'm gonna go down the slide. You wanna go down the slide? Yeah, you're gonna have three slides on your playset. Okay. Yeah, you three. That's why your neighbor's helping. He's like, the way his kid can play on it too. It is. His kid's four years old, so they play together. Yeah, perfect. I'm still bullish on YCBD. I am too. I'm still in. I got a stop loss at 138 on YCBD. And so I'm going to forget about that one. I'm going to put the stop loss in on SRNE at uh, just under eight bucks. And then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go get my workout on. It's raining. Is it raining up there? It's raining here. Yeah, it's raining a little bit. Get a sleche? Uh-huh. Okay. See? Yeah. Oh, milk. milk, Daddy. I will give you some milk. So is anybody else in anything right now? So yeah, D twenty two for you. If you're just if you're it sounds like you just popped in right now. We are 
so I'm long right now. SRNE with an average of eight dollars and twenty-eight cents. Um, I was long this morning, sold up there right at the open from over the weekend, and then we're also long YCBD. How do I get Henry? How do I get back to my watch list? Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, so we're also long YCBD at uh, we bought it as soon as it popped over VWAP here at a dollar forty. I sold a little bit into this push towards the 150s, and then I'm risking 138. So as long as it stays over view app, we're going to stay in YCBD. It's a weed play, and so ACBD, I don't know if you noticed D22, but ACBD is uh, third green day. It is squeezing the shit out of shorts right now, or squeezing the poop out of shorts. ACB. ACB, Aurora Cannabis. So that's kind of we, why we bought, we dip bought YCBD, uh, hopefully this can move in sympathy with uh, ACB. The spy is going up. Mac and Saba back in, Brian Dem says. And the spy is going up. Mac, what's that? I don't think it was MAC. Mac. Mm -hmm. Daddy. Yes. What's in mouth? Okay. What's in mouth? Yes, yeah, yeah, that looks yeah. good. What's in mouth? That's some resistance. Looks like it's 750. And then 8. But. With 8, going to be a breakout on the daily, and that could be a. Nice one. Looking good now. Holding trend. I can't chase it up there though. But I'm definitely confident in my Sab. I think, I mean, I know I'll get $3. I don't think of today, but I can see getting it the next day or two. So I'm just going to be patient with that one. I got lucky though. I added, or I bought in. It was a Thursday or Friday or whatever. I got in at 180 and then I actually added to my position. So my average now is two bucks. So I don't think three is too unrealistic to get out. All right. You got in last Friday. Yeah, that, that overnight gap was epic on SRNE. It was awesome. I was buying it all day on Friday and then uh, held some over over the weekend. So it was pretty pretty sweet to get a gap, nice huge gap up like that. And this YCBD is looking good, Henry. Looking good. I'm liking it a lot. And like I said, my uh, SRNE... I have such an awesome entry, I can just sit back and not worry about it, really. Henry's still long from 460. 465. Look at that. We're, looks like we're going to break high, high day on YCBD. Squeeze, yeah. Yeah. It was a perfect buy. Good alert, Henry. YCBD. Anybody else jump in on YCBD with us? American Airlines, I thought about it, but... Uh, unless you don't plan on holding it long term, I just don't think. It's too risky. All the airlines are right now. They go down, then they pop up. It just all depends how you're trading it.
Oh, how long you plan on holding YCBD, Henry? Uh, well, once it breaks 160 and holds above 150, I'm just going to move my stop loss up. No, no, I'm going to watch it for a little bit. The way it's going, I don't see a reason it shouldn't get to 175. I might sell some at 175 and then see if it can hit a $2 mark. Buying, you thinking about shorting YCBD? No, I'm not thinking about shorting it. No, buying. Yeah, Invex is a monster, man. Invax is some dude. God, Invax is just wow, sixty-one dollars. Oh my god, Brian, you were shorting this sucker back in last Monday. Thank God I cut that trade. Thank God but I was back in like April. You were you were you were playing Invex a lot. I remember I was. You yep. were shorting in the twenties or something and. Too bad. Imagine if you would have just held. Held long? Because I know you're shortening in the. Probably the 17, 18s, the 20s. Dude, I mean, look at this. This is unreal. $61. They they're, were they again? They're, on, they're trying to find the cure for the COVID. I know, but. Who has the N95 mask? That's APT. APT. What are they at today? What are they doing? Probably nothing. Oh, they, they, wow, that'd have been. They're selling more masks than they've ever sold in their whole company history, and their stock it still doesn't go up. $15, and it dropped all the way to $12.70. Dude, Invax is just a beast. Look at YCBD. Go, beep, beep. Henry, we're only up 20 cents. Still, regardless though, Henry, it was a good, it was a good alert. I'm glad you set the alert. I'm glad you set the alert because we're squeezing. Are we not? Look at that buy it get bought up and that pullback in the 150s. Do you like it when it gets bought up, Henry? I love when it gets bought up. I love the... I love the people that are getting the FOMO right now, and I was actually ahead of them and not one of the FOMO people, which sometimes I'm FOMO. He's a piece of styrofoam. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, SRNE pulling back to 850, you piece of crap. Hopefully the CNBC sheep will come in and buy it up. You would think that people, okay, so day one it had this huge move. Huge move. There's going to be people that on the second day of the move or on the second day they're like, oh, wow, this is the biggest stock. This stock's up huge. It's just on CNBC. Okay, we got to get in. Well, not everybody, obviously, you know, if it wasn't for um, who, who alerted us. If, if, if he wouldn't alert it, I wouldn't have knew it was on. Oh, uh, no, I didn't alert it. It was someone in chat. I think it was Bri oh, yes, Brian. He, was it Brian? Yeah, I mean, if he didn't alert it, we wouldn't have known. So people are not, you know, not everybody's... Watching get, CNBC? Yeah, getting that news right away, you know, so that... But dude, some people actually watch CNBC. They're like, what? some yeah. people actually watch it for getting stock picks. Yeah, and just trade the stocks that they talk about. No, I understand that. Look at that, Pal Cash is, uh, he's out of YCBD. I, I don't disagree with yourself, Pal Cash. I like it. You made 20 cents, you made 10% on a dollar fifteen stock, you know. I'm gonna, I'm trying to. Dang, Brian, you're, you're in at 570 a Mac? Nice. He's in what? A couple bucks a share. I don't know. I think YCBD is going to push higher. 
but that could just be the the bowl in you the bowl the hope the hopefulness in me the the greediness maybe I don't know I mean it's but, not showing any signs of weakness right now Siren E's getting bought up at 8 dude I, I nice. cannot believe Invax is still going higher That's going to be an amazing short for some people someday. So, Invex put out some more news. They had to. Uh, I guess an analyst upgraded it. And then thinking about trading stocks, options. Okay, so that analyst upgraded it. Big fucking deal. Raised <laughs> to 53 from 43. So it's already over uh, it. Those analysts. Fucking analyst. We could I, be analysts. You, I love the analysts, actually. We could, be, we could be like, yep, this stock. I mean, I could. I said stocks are going to go to 25 bucks, and they do. I mean, why not? Why can't I do it? Henry fucking picked SR. He called 850 on Friday. Yeah, I could have been an analyst on Friday. <laughs> Look at YCBD. Come on, baby. Pop through. I definitely think I'm going to be able to get close to two bucks on it. I raised my stop to 145, so I can't lose on the trade now anyway, so we'll see what it does. Just slide my stop up. Slide it up, slide it up. I might sell some though at like one I think one seventy five. What about this dip on SRNE? Is this the ad spot? It's where we add? I did add it at 846. Just a little bit. Dude, I can't believe Invax is up so much. That's nuts. They give him an analyst upgrade up to 53, and it goes to 60. What the so hell? They'll change, that. they'll change that, and they'll say 80. <laughs> Damn. This thing was a $3 stock a few months ago. Imagine if you bought it and just, like, forgot about it. Mmm, Henry. What? God. Scoop me do. Fuck yeah, Henry. Good job. Good job, Henry. Now we're up 30 cents. Alright, I sold a little bit more there at 168. Hell yes. Go, Henry. Go, Henry. Go, go, go. It's almost my birthday. Yeah, yeah. Seven days. I'm going to be 40 years old. Ugh. What's wrong with that? 
They say it's all downhill when you hit 40. What do you mean? Dude, I'm 42, bro. Yeah. I'm 42 and living my best COVID life. <laughs> oh, I almost sent you a funny snap last night. <laughs> it cracked me up and it made me think of you. I was watching an episode of The Office. Did you ever see The Office? Yeah. Okay. So Pam brought her like three-year-old in and the baby into the office and they both started crying and being loud and everybody in the office was just staring at them like get these fucking kids out of here and Jim was like trying to get the baby to stop crying and that and everybody in the office was like just go just take the rest of the day off go get out of here <laughs> <laughs> like, that sounds like Brian he's got a three year you know and a baby and they're in the back crying and it's like ah. Next year, though, I'm building onto my house. I'm building, I'm adding on a separate room. And that's going to be my, and I'm going to have two big bay doors. I'm going to close those motherfuckers so I can shut up, shut them all out when I'm trying to trade. It's going to be your sanctuary. It is. I don't know what I should do. I don't know if I want to buy my Tesla first or build onto the house. I'll probably build on the house because it puts because it because it, it's, it's, it's you know it, it yeah builds equity in my house and it's an asset, not a liability. And it's uh, it'll keep you uh, less stressed. I'm not buying the Tesla until my trading account is like over five hundred thousand dollars. That way you can just buy it outright. Yeah. Just buy it outright. I already know how I'm gonna buy it too. I'm gonna I'm gonna fly out there. I'll probably take my I'm gonna me and my wife and kids are gonna fly out there and you can buy I'm gonna take a tour through the Tesla factory. Cause I know you can take a tour through the Tesla factory and I'm gonna just give them my card and buy it right there. Boom. Paid for hundred percent and then we're gonna we'll hang we'll kick it and San Francisco and then we'll drive down the coast and basically basically I'm gonna take like a three-week vacation I'm gonna drive down the coast I'm gonna go through probably uh, you know check out like maybe go hiking at Yosemite maybe go to the casino in uh, Lake Tahoe hit up LA San Diego then come across maybe hit up the Grand Canyon in Arizona then go visit my family in New Mexico and then uh, come back up and come to Iowa. And what I'm going to do when I got my accounts up to a good amount, I'm going to buy my dream car. The Mustang from Eleanor. And I'm going to drive the Route 66. It's going to be amazing. That goes to uh, Albuquerque. It does. Uh, I don't know where it all goes through, but... They say, I know a couple people that they did it and they said it's pretty cool. So I like SRNE. See how it came up, got rejected by VWAP, but pulled back. Now it's making higher lows. Now it consolidates around this 848 range for, let's say, 10, 15 minutes and then starts grinding back up. That would be amazing. I don't see anything else. That's exciting today. I didn't see no halts or anything. Oh, shit! Ugh. Sorry. Just a stock that I almost bought last Monday. I just seen. AQST. Oh, I remember that one. I was thinking about that one last night. AQST. Oh, wow. This is on Zip Trader's uh, little watch list. Yeah, and that's 
when he said it yesterday, I was like, yeah, I was looking at that like a week or so ago. Can't chase it up here, though. So. They have earnings coming up this week, so, you know, buy it up here and the earnings are shit. It'll be $4, you know. Actually, you know what's depressing about this? I had, I had a, I was watching it when it was holding the $3, 350 range, and I'm like, yeah, I should buy this and swing this for a week or two. It was consolidating in the middle of April. I was watching it, but I didn't, and then I kind of forgot about it. Damn it. I'm going to mark this one up on another one that I've seen a week or two ahead of time, and then they run. <laughs> Just add it to the list of all the ones I miss out on. Why don't I buy them? What's wrong with me? You can't buy them all, Henry. Yeah, you can. <laughs> but does, doesn't that happen, Brian? Like, how many times have I like, told you about a stock, and then a week later it's up, like, 40% or some stupid number? At least, a lot, isn't it? Yeah, at least, at least several times a week, at least. I know, it's frustrating. Oh well, someday when I'm good at trading, I'll know what to do. You don't have to be good, you just gotta make money. Oh, okay. Yeah, you don't got to be good to make money. You just got to be better than somebody else, I guess. <sighs> Why CBD? How high are you going to go? To the moon! Or to infinity and beyond. First green day. So I like how it, I mean, squeezed up there, it pulled back, it's holding 150. I'm loving that. I'm loving it. You know why I'm loving it? Why? I'm thinking about adding on this pullback towards VWAP right here on ACBD or YCBD. And it's just going to keep making higher lows and, uh, and gonna add more. I'm going to add some. I got sick of watching Mark, so I just sold the rest of mine at 140. So all out of that kind of slowed down. And like, I'm going to just take all my profits and move on to something else. Yeah, fuck Mark. He's not doing shit. I don't like when stocks aren't doing shit. I don't like when they're taking... Like... Even even if it's not... even Okay, say I have plenty of money in my account and it's not really taking up my... my bankroll. Like, well, it's not stopping me from making other trades or whatever. I don't like it whenever a stock takes up like my mental capital what takes up my cognitive energy i have to think about it and look at it and worry about it and if it's not doing nothing then and lick my ass <laughs> all right invax pulling back god i want to short it so bad Ugh. i'm scared too though yeah i would say stay away on a short on that stupid thing I mean, it is going to be an amazing short, unless you're only trying to, you know, get a dollar or something. I mean. No, I don't want, I'm not going to short it. I don't like chasing it down here. It's. Yeah, 
and vax. So yeah, if I was going to short it, I wouldn't want to, yeah, I don't want to short it on this. Because it could just hold this right here. You just get bought up and then keep squeezing. Yeah. I'll leave it alone and just watch it. God, I hope CODX bounces. Oh man, look at my Sava setting up nicely for an afternoon squeeze. I might get my $3 today. What do you think? Uh, Sava? Maybe. Yeah. It could. As long as it don't pull back and touch VWAP again like it did. Begin to go Meanwhile, SRNE is looking lovely as well. So everything's looking nice. So I think I'm gonna shitty outside. I think I'm gonna take a nap. Damn it, SRNE or Invax just Yeah, I'm gonna set my stop loss. I got a stop loss in on my Oh, I want to get rid of that one. I mean, realistically, I mean, it's a fifty-seven dollar stock. Like, how many shares would you buy of it? Uh, probably like two or three hundred. So, say I bought three hundred, or say I shorted three hundred shares of fifty-seven dollars. You know, if it moves five bucks a share, you know what I mean? That's yeah. fifteen hundred bucks. Be amazing. But. Like on the flip side, if it squeezes five dollars a share, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Just, well, I'm not going to short it into this weakness. That's for damn sure. Yeah. You know, right now I can't short. I, I mean, this this yank and this pullback though. I'm, you know, say we get a bounce, I might, I might short at like, if we can get a bounce up to like fifty nine or sixty. You know, I'll short three hundred shares and risk high a day. Because easily pull back to where it's at right now, then, yeah. But if it doesn't break down, if it doesn't start to break down, then I wouldn't hold it overnight. Because then, you know, hold it overnight, it gap up again and squeeze more. What would Nate Mashad say with the, the way the chart is? Like, they getting good at understanding him? Uh, I don't know what he would say. Yeah. He's he's not in uh, chat today because he's uh I guess he's having a baby. Yeah, I've seen that. That's why he, he did so, his thing early yesterday. Yeah, he didn't do the morning call today. I love the fact that he does the morning call. I like the morning call. He could be having a baby right now. So for those of you, I'm, I recently subscribed to Investors Live or Investors Underground. So every morning, Nate Mashad at uh, 8.50 Eastern Standard Time. He does a morning call and he goes over his top potential plays and his plan for those. It's kind of nice. Then sometimes midday, throughout the middle of the day, whenever the, the action will slow down, he'll get on a live broadcast and like, say there's a big play like SRNE. He'll he'll get on midday and he'll talk about you know what he thinks about the play or where potential key levels are, you know, long, short, whatever. So that's kind of nice. So the, I haven't checked him today. You know, I you know we like to check Weeble chat. Um, so for YCBD. Somebody put it on the chat that online sales increased by 72%. So they must have a marijuana like, website or something, which would be amazing. Just go online and buy your weed. But let's see what they say about SRN. See what they're saying.
God, I hope SR and E doesn't go below of eight. Back to nine dollars we go. Fight the clips with calls. She's going to be thirteen. The stock is going to go to ten by the end of the day. That's what they're saying in Weeble. The SR and E is going to go to ten by the end of the day. Yeah. I don't know about that. I guess it could. Then somebody to get on here says, so is the offering before or after lunch? <laughs> That's funny. But like the CNBC interview, though, they said, I mean, it was positive. It wasn't negative. Power hour today, this should knock down most walls till we hit 10 to $11. Tomorrow will be the day to really watch when it flies. Hmm. Just remember what everybody said about CAPR. They had the cure to write, and they were at 10, 2, and now they are 5. So, so yeah, who knows? Nobody does, except for the market. All I can do is put my stop loss in and ride the wave. Ride, Sally, ride. All you gotta do is ride, Sally, ride. All right, I'm gonna go work out. Yeah, it was a good day, fun day. Hopefully. Oh, Jonathan asked about how I like IU. Uh, well, so they have... Okay, so he has... Um, one thing I really like about it is that... And you can do this on your E-Trade or think, think or Swim. But for some reason, I never get the alerts. Price alerts. He has them where you can set the price alerts really easily on his chat. And I like that a lot. Uh... And then he has two chat rooms. He has the momentum chat where, you know, that's all. The only thing you're doing is just posting price action. And then he has the trader's lounge, which this one, the trader's lounge is, that's where you go in. That's where people just fucking bullshit and talk like we are. You ask questions, talk about this, talk about that. You can just say whatever you want in the trader's lounge. And a lot of times Nate will get in there and he'll, and he'll, uh, he'll hop in there and he'll answer questions and he'll talk about stuff. And, um, and then every single day, so he has a Sunday scan that he puts out every week, right, on YouTube. But every single day for members, he, has a, he puts out his watch list every single day and he talks about what he's going to. And then also, not only his watch list, but he, there's other gurus in there. Like they have a swing trading person. They have gurus that are they're basically good at different niches and uh and they put their watch list in there so there's a lot of good trade ideas as far as that's concerned and then he has the morning call which is nice and then sometimes in the midday they'll uh he'll he'll do some stuff midday just out of the blue he'll do a live broadcast so um uh one thing i like about sykes's chat room Better than investors, better than investors, investors underground is that Sykes is more focused on like lower price stocks. So they're always in Sykes is we're always talking about the you know all the small names. Whereas in investors underground, yeah, they're still talking about you know anything that is moving. But they're they talk about a lot of higher price names. They're talk they, a lot of times they're talking about you know. Fucking Roku and Tesla and you know stocks Amazon stocks that are super high priced. So, but I mean any any big huge percent gainer, you're gonna see them in both chat rooms. Oh, SRNE starting to act like a little bitch. Look at that. Testing eight. 
I got my stop loss in at eight ninety seven. Yeah, I actually I put mine in at seven fifty. Oh man, we were all high on ourselves. We watched CNBC. Guess what? They're gonna get bought up right here. I think it is. I mean, it did twice before earlier, so hopefully it does it again. And that hopefully it does, and then that just starts to become the new sport. Eight bucks. That'd be amazing. I just added to mine. I just bought it again, down at eight. But I'm gonna keep my wrist super tight at at eight. If it can't hold eight, I, I'm not gonna fucking let myself get a. Uh, well, no, because you can just sell, and then if it pulls down to 750 and regains, you can hop back in. Actually, I'm just going to stick with seven. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take a nap. And hopefully I wake up and it didn't take me out at seven bucks. Is it gonna hold eight? I'm getting kinda of scared here. Come on, hold eight. It's trying, it's trying. I don't think it's going to hold eight. Let's see. All right, I put the stop loss in. It doesn't look like it's going to hold. There it goes. And. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Look at that. Getting bought up like crazy at eight, man. I thought it was about to give it up and then it just. I bought more. Support level. Come on, CNBC buyers. Let's do it. Eight dollars. Eight dollar make you holla. Buy it up, bitches. Or not. Oh, come on. You're just on CNBC. Bro, you hit the big time. With your antibodies. <laughs> yes. Yes! You like that? I, I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. I want some more of it. Of it. I like it. Give me some. Give me some. Come on, you fuck. Double bottom. Never mind. Got too excited too fast. What are you talking about? It's still going up. All right. I think you need to just stick to five-minute candlesticks. I thought about doing that. 
just doing five minutes. I yeah. sometimes I go to five minute candles and I just watch the five minute candles because otherwise with the one minute candles every tick is just like a emotional roller coaster. For you. Yeah, but look at that, dude! From the five minute chart, that's really bullish. Look at that five minute candle where it just got bought up at eight. But sometimes, like, when I'm watching the five-minute candles, I'm like, man, what's going on inside this five minutes? Then I'll switch to the one-minute candles. <laughs> oh, I see BDs pulling back, testing VWAP. Son of a bitch. What? You don't think it's going to test VWAP? Of course it is. Well, I didn't want to until it was higher and VWAP was, like, 155 or 150 or 160 or something like that. You know, then it can test the VWAP, but not right now. Henry wants it his way. Same Burger King, bitch. I don't, I'm I'm perfectly fine with it moving back to VWAP. I got my stop loss in at 138. So as long as it holds over VWAP and it keeps this shitty trend going. Yeah, it'll get bought up right here, dude. Heck yeah, half dollar mark. Yeah. Buy it, suckers. Hell, I want to buy some more. Snicker? How do you say that? Snicker? Snicker. That's my way of being racist without being racist. Let a, let a snicker. My black friends can't get mad at me. Yeah, Nate is mostly uh, a he's mostly a short bias trader. I think Ratani learned a lot from Nate Mashad. A lot of Gratani's like lingo and the way that he thinks is very mimicked after Nate. There you go. Jonathan uses a three minute candle. You could try that. It's an in between. Three minute candle is what I use. Love it. Three minute candles, never thought of that. Okay, I bought some more SRNE SRNE down here at uh 152. YCBD? YCBD, thank you. Oh man. SRNE. Please hold. For the love of God, please hold. Yeah, Tim does. Tim always just calls everybody stupid for shorting. I don't know why. Not even shorting, just asking questions in general. <laughs> Go watch one of my 6,000 videos. Come on, $8. What's it going to do, Henry? SRNE. Tell me. I hate to say it, but I'm starting to lose faith in it. Come on, Henry. Let I me mean, just look at it. It's just... Is it gonna? Is it going to hit my stop loss? Please don't do it to me. I got so excited just three minutes ago. I was all excited. And now look at it. The sad thing, like, when it got rejected by VWAP, really blew. And now it's going just lower and lower. All right. So basically, if SRNE takes me out right here, I got my stop loss in a YCBD and I'm walking away. I'm not, because really there's nothing else that I see setting up that I like. And I, I don't want to sit here and watch the fucking screens or else 
I'll end up getting in something stupid. Yeah, nothing else is really... And I, I don't want to give back any more of my profits. I mean, I already had a nice $2,000 win on the day, but I already gave back a couple hundred bucks, so... How's, a uh... We're not dead yet. It's still at eight. It's still holding over eight. Barely. ACB could be a could be setting up for a potential short for you. There's no shares to short. Oh, I'm out of SRNE. Ugh, broke you eight dollars. Fucking piece of shit. God, I'm so sad. I mean, I don't think it's just going to roll over all the way back down to freaking $4. Do you? No. But so where's going to find support? I moved my stop loss to 690 because that was such a good position, obviously, but it's, it could pull back to 7 But I don't. What was Friday's? Because after hours of seven. Look at it. It just barely takes me out and then starts getting bought right back up. That's so annoying. Freaking market makers. They saw Brian again. They're like, take his money. Let's snatch up those shares quick. We know he'll buy back in. <laughs> I did buy back in. Did you hear it? I just got back in. Yep. I didn't give it up, man. It like it barely went through A and then just so I got back in at seven ninety one. Fuck. I should have just left it alone. I need to quit. Alright, put your stop loss in, walk away. Because I'm I'm sure yep. I'll take nap two and We've been uh, going strong for two hours now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of my screen. I'm gonna make it where I can't see it while I'm walking around the house. There you go. Oh, look at my fab up! Boom! I knew it was setting up the squeeze. Yeah, I might get three bucks out of that bitch today. See that? See that nice consolidation there for the last like freaking half an hour in the two twenties? I'm like, this sucker is gonna pop. I called it. There she goes. There she goes. Somebody else in the room has been with Sava with me, I think. So hopefully we get three bucks today. That'd be amazing. Amazing. Like it how uh, YCBD pulled back to VWAP, but didn't touch it, and it's kind of climbing now. So I like that. <clears throat> Buying them is in Saba. That's right. What's your entry? On Saba? Yeah, for buying. What's what's your entry? <sighs> Henry, I'm about to text the other poker players. Are you sure you don't want to play tonight? Change my mind. I want to play. All right. Then I'll just hit up. What do you want me to hit up? Because I'm, cause I'm either going to hit... I, I'm not going to text them both. I'm either hit up Farmer Mike or Estes. I don't know Farmer Mike. I'll hit up Farmer Mike. Sweet. I don't care. Who's, uh... Who's on the lineup? Who's uh, easier? Uh, 
They're both they're both action. Gotcha. So then White Devil's gonna be there. Cullen says he doesn't know, but he always he always shows up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> but he's not on the opening lineup. He'll always he shows up later. Yeah. Yeah, okay, whatever you want. Whatever you want. I mean, yeah. I'm just gonna if if it's Estes just because the way he plays, I'm just gonna be only playing primo hands with him. Oh, Bender's gonna come. I forgot about that. You haven't met Bender yet. Bender is a fucking maniac. Jason Bender, he's actually, actually, Jason Bender is an amazing tournament player. He's cashed in several uh, MSPTs, uh, WSOPs. Um, he has probably like a half a million dollars in like tournament caches. Then why do you want to invite him? Because, dude, when it comes to like actual, that's tournament play. When it comes to cash game, he's, dude, he's a lot of fun. He's kind of like the White Devil, dude. He'll just jam his chips in there. Just pre-flop. Just fucking, he's crazy. Gotcha. He plays a lot of hands. He, do, he does, he's very, he's very creative. Let's put it that way. He's good for the game. Okay. Guarantee you that. We want him in there. What time are we playing? 4.30. 4.30, okay. I'm making sandwiches for everybody, too. I bought some some nice sourdough bread. I'm gonna make uh, ham and turkey, avocado and tomato sandwiches. Mm, sounds amazing. And then I'm I'm bringing like a veggie tray, with the ranch dip and some hummus, and some uh, and also some peanut butter pretzels to snack on, and a little bit of weed. <laughs> Sounds amazing. Fucking SRNE. I was in love with you this morning. Now I hate you. Okay. Time to go. Later, everybody. Oh, Jonathan, I wish you were here too, bro. Maybe one day you come and visit us. Yeah. Oh, hey, listen to this, Henry. My daughter just brought me a poker chip. <laughs> what? I, apparently, I brought it home with me the other night. Didn't know it. Uh, oh, you're stealing Victor's Where'd you find this chip? at? Upstairs. Upstairs? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get my... I'm going to get a... a I'm going to get my thing hooked up where I, you guys can see my face. You can see how cute my kid is. Anyways, we'll see you guys Friday. Maybe, maybe, maybe Wednesday. We might be back Wednesday too. I'm not sure, but for sure, at latest Friday. You guys have a good, safe trading week. Hi, Daddy. Okay. Don't keep rebuying SRNE like me as it goes down. It yeah, wait till it consolidates and goes sideways and starts trending up, and then buy it. Yeah. There you go. We go through this like every day. Daddy, <laughs> where's my blankie? Where's my blankie go? I don't know where your blankie goes. Anyways, uh, other than that, you guys have a good week. Trade safe. See you guys in chat. Uh, it was fun. Yep, later.